for this opportunity this morning to lead us in this uh, opening prayer for this morning glory uh, in the book of Psalms 95 it says oh come let us sing to the Lord let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation why not just go before the Lord this morning and appreciate him for making it possible for you to be 
counted among the living. Just open your mouth and give God all the praise. God, we thank you, you that have been the rock of our salvation. We appreciate you and we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory, we give you all the honor. We want to thank you, O oh Lord, because you have been the rock of our salvation. We thank you, O oh Lord, because you have been our God. We thank you that you have always prevailed over all. Lord, we appreciate you. We worship and exalt your holy name. We give you all the praise, O oh Lord. We come before you to say thank you because you have counted us among the living. Many wish to see today, but Lord, it is by your grace that we are alive, O oh Lord. And we just give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We return all adoration unto you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In the book of Psalms 84, Psalms chapter 84, verse 1 to 2, it says, How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. We are going to be crying out for the presence of God because without his presence, this meeting would not be made possible. So we would ask, oh Lord, we call forth for your presence. Let the presence of the living God be in our midst today. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we call forth for your presence. We call forth for the presence of the living God. The living God who made the heavens and the earth. We ask, O oh Lord, that you let your presence be in our midst today. Come and saturate the whole place with your presence. Wherever people are connecting from, whatever location, you are the omnipotent, omnipresent, O oh Lord. Father, we pray that you are going to fill every house, every place that your people are located watching this live stream from, that you will fill that place with your presence in the name of Jesus. Everyone is going to experience your presence wherever they are in the name of Jesus. And you will write miracles, signs and wonders through this in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In the book of Psalms chapter 95, and I'll be reading verse 2. It says, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. We're going to be praying that God bring your people to your feet today. Wherever they are, whatever that is holding them down, we break every chain that is holding them down and we pray that let them come before his presence today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, O oh Lord, that you break every chain, lose your people bound and set them free to be in your presence in the name of Jesus. Father, set them free to be in your presence today in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that your people will be in your presence today. We call forth for your people. We call forth for your people. Everyone whose word is ready for them today. Everyone whose testimony is ready for them today. Anyone who believes, oh Lord, that you are a living God and their miracle is, is, is ready today. Let them connect in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. And we'll be reading from the book of Psalms 119. Psalms 119 and verse 105 and it says your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path we'll be praying that god let your word be the light that lights our week today in the name of jesus as the remaining days of this week are going to be ending let your light shine through our week as the word comes in the name of jesus father in the name of jesus we pray oh lord as your word comes let it come with the light that will help us Finish this week strong in the name of Jesus. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. We have started a new month and we are ending the week. We pray that, Lord, as your word comes, the word will come with a light that will shine throughout the remaining days of this week for us in the name of Jesus. Let your word come with a light that is going to shine upon every situation, upon every issue that your people are facing, upon every circumstance, O oh Lord that we are going to have the light of God shining and walking with us throughout the remaining days of this week as your word comes in Jesus' name. Father, we exalt you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 1, Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 9, it says, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. We'll be praying for the servant of God. That let the Holy Spirit touch his mouth today and give him a needed word for the people in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we pray that you stretch forth your hand and touch the mouth of your servant. 
touch the mouth of your servant, the sent man that you have sent for today's word. Touch his mouth, O oh Lord. Let his mouth carry utterance. Let his mouth be able to prophesy. Let his mouth be able to deliver the word as you have given unto him. Father, we pray for your anointing over his life, that as you touch his mouth, O oh Lord, he will speak the words of the Lord. He will speak the words of healing. He will speak the words of encouragement. He will speak the words of dominion, the words of restoration in the name of Jesus, a word that will settle us today in Jesus' name. Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that you touch the mouth of your servant in the name of Jesus. Empower him today, O oh Lord. We pray for your empowerment over his life. Lord, we exalt you. Just go before the Lord and appreciate him. Give him all the praise and all the glory because he has heard and answered your prayer this morning. Lord, we exalt you. We appreciate you, O oh God. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You're not a man, Lord. You're not a man, Lord. You're the God who opens doors no man can shut. You're not a man. You're not a man, Lord. You're not a man. You're the God of everything, no one like you. You're not a man, you're not a man, Lord. You're not a man, Lord. You're the God who opens doors, no man can shut. You're not a man, Lord. You're not a man, Lord. You're the God of everything, no one like you. No one like you, Jesus. No one like you. No one like you, Savior, no one like you, Master. You're the God of everything, no one like you. No one like you, no one like you, Jesus, no one like you. Yes, Lord. No one like you, as no one like you, Master. You're the God of everything, no one like you. No one like you, no one like you, Jesus, no one like you. No one like you, Lord. No one like you, Eledu Mare. No one like you. No one like you. No one like you, Master. No one like you, Savior. You're the God of everything. No one like you. You're not a man, you're not a man, Lord, you're not a man, Lord. You're the God who opens doors no man can shut. You're not a man, Lord, you're not a man. You're the God of everything, no one like you. You're not a man, you're not a man, Lord. You're not a man, Lord. You're the God who opens doors, no man can shut.
God of everything, no one like you. No one like you, no one like you, Jesus, no one like you. No one like you, no one like you, no one like you, Master, no one like you, Savior. You're the God of everything, no one like you, no one like you, no one like you. No one like you, no one like you, no one like you, Jesus, no one like you, no one like you, Savior, no one like you, Master, you are the God of everything. No one like you. You are the God of everything. You are the God of everything. No one like you. You are the God of everything. You are the God of everything. No one like you. You are the God of everything. You are the God. You heal. You save. You deliver. You're the God of everything. You're the God of everything. No one like you. Oh, you are the God of everything. You are the God of everything. No one like you. Go ahead and glorify his name. No one like him. He heals. He saves. He delivers. He's the God of everything. Lord, you are the God of everything. You are the God of everything. You give direction, oh God. You are the God of everything. You save and you deliver. Oh Lord, we bless your name. Is he the God of everything in your life? If he is, I'm sure you can't afford to be quiet where you are. You are the God of everything. You are the God of everything. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you for being the God of everything in my life. Thank you for being the God of everything. You are my all in all. You are my all in all. Thank you, Jesus. You are the God of everything. You offer direction. You are the God of everything. You are king to hearken to our, our cry. You are the God of everything. Lord, you are ever there to answer our prayers. You are the God of everything. You have fought our battles on our behalf, both seen battles and unseen battles. You are the God of everything. This morning, oh God, we bless your name. This morning, we appreciate you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given him thanks. In Jesus' great name, we have worshipped him. Praise the Lord. Indeed, he has been the God of everything to our lives. Hallelujah. He's been so kind and he's been so faithful. Just as you are, you don't feed your children with stale food because you know it is not healthy for them. That is who God has been to us. He has never fed us with stale food on this altar. Every time we appear before him, he has been feeding us with fresh manna from heaven. Meal that he's sure will satisfy us. Meal that he's sure will nourish us. Meal that he's sure will, 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 will satisfy us in all areas of our lives. I want us to go ahead and thank the Lord for his knowledge, for the knowledge of his word, the knowledge of his word that he feeds us with daily, the knowledge of his word that has been nourishing our spirit man, the knowledge of his word that has kept us fresh. Let's go ahead and appreciate him this morning. Lord, we appreciate you for the knowledge of your word. You have never fed us with, with stale food, oh God. You have been feeding us with fresh manna from above. 
with fresh manner from above. We give you all the glory for the knowledge of your word that has kept us fresh day by day. The knowledge of the word of God has renewed our strength like eagles. Father, we thank you. The knowledge of the word of God, oh hallelujah. Lord, thank you for the knowledge of your word in our Christian journey. The knowledge of your word that has continued to strengthen us on our Christian journey. The knowledge of your word that has kept us in faith. The knowledge of your word. We have not backslidden. The knowledge of your word that has been engrafted, oh God, on the table of our hearts. We give you all the glory this morning. The knowledge of your word that has healed us. The knowledge of your word, oh Lord, that has smelled upon our lives the aura of acceptability. Go ahead and give the Lord glory. The knowledge of your word that have delivered us from deadly characters. Oh Father, we thank you. We exalt your name this morning. Receive all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given him thanks. Amen. Romans chapter 12 and verse number 2. Romans 12 verse 2. He say, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. We'll be praying, we'll be asking the Lord, and Lord, open my spirit man up for inner transformation. Open my spirit man up for inner transformation. It is the transformation within that birth the transformation without. We'll be asking the Lord, if you desire an inner transformation, especially in this month of October, tell the Lord to open your spirit man up for inner transformation. Even as I land at your feet this morning, let's go ahead and pray. Father, open my spirit man up this morning for inner transformation for inner transformation, oh God. I desire an inner transformation. If my inner man is transformed, oh God, it means every area of my life will be transformed. I ask for inner transformation. Inner transformation. One thing that must not happen to you as a child of God is to be physically okay, but while within you are getting rotten. Ask the Lord for inner transformation. Ask the Lord for inner transformation. Lord, I ask for inner transformation. Inner transformation happens at the instance of beholding the word of God. I'm here this morning. As I behold your word, Lord, I pray for inner transformation. Cry out for inner transformation. Transform me, O God. Transform me internally. Transform me internally. Until there is an inner transformation, it will be difficult for us to reflect Christ. Lord, transform me from my inside. Transform me from my inside. I pray this prayer sincerely from my heart today. Lord, I desire an inner transformation. I desire an inner transformation. Lord, open my spirit man up. Tell the Lord to open your spirit man up. That is what we are here for. Open my spirit man up, O oh God, for an inner transformation. For an inner transformation. The Bible tells us when the disciples were saved, they didn't have to introduce themselves by virtue of the inner transformation that has taken place in their life. They saw them and they confirmed that these ones have been with Christ. When an inner transformation happens in our life, we don't need to introduce ourselves. Oh Lord, I desire an inner transformation. As a Christian, I desire an inner transformation. I don't want to be rotten on my inside. I desire an inner transformation, especially in such a time as this. I desire an inner transformation that would keep the flame of my salvation ablaze. It takes an inner transformation to keep the flame of your salvation ablaze. We need to keep the flame of our salvation ablaze. Ask the Lord for an inner transformation. Oh Lord, thank you Father. Receive glory Lord. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. We'll be going ahead to say Lord let your gift of righteousness in me work the needed change within. Let your gift of righteousness in me walk the needed change within me 
Oh Lord, let the gift of your righteousness in me walk the needed change from within me. Go ahead and pray. Father, let the gift of your righteousness. Today I'm not asking you for any physical material, oh God. I'm asking for transformation in my life. When our life is transformed, there is no physical material that will not that, that our lives will not attract. Lord, let your gift of righteousness in me walk the needed change. Let it walk the needed change within, oh God. Pray that prayer that you are not living to this morning glory the same. That there will be notable change. Oh God, let your gift of righteousness, let your gift of righteousness walk the needed change within me. Let it walk the needed change within me. When the gift of his righteousness walk the needed change, we will die to self daily. We will die to self daily. Oh God, the reason why many are not able to die to self is because there is no change within. But this morning we'll be asking the Lord, let the gift of your righteousness walk the needed change within me. Walk the needed change within me. That I'll be able to die to self daily. It is our ability to die to self daily that leads to spiritual productivity. Lord, let the Holy Spirit, let your righteousness walk the change within me. Walk the change within me that I'll be able to die to self daily so that I can be productive spiritually, so that I can be productive in the side of the Lord. Listen to me, until you're productive in the side of the Lord, you will never be productive here on earth. And what helps us to be productive in the side of the Lord is the walk within, is the walk within. Spirit of God, righteousness of God, walk that walk within me. Thank you, great God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I believe we have earnestly asked from the Lord and he has heard our prayers. Why not go ahead and give him all the glory? Father, we thank you. We appreciate you, Jesus. We give you honor, we give you praise and adoration. In Jesus' mighty name, let's welcome God's servant as he takes us further in this service. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our God is a good God. Amen. Amen. To him be all the glory. Amen. Amen. We thank him for bringing us to new month. Amen. Today is the second day of October 2000, year 2020. Amen. The great hand of God that brought you in will sustain us. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, faithful Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Uh, please let's take our seat. I'd like to welcome all our brethren who are connected to us right now. I'd like to welcome you to this wonderful morning glory. Amen. It is a morning service. The Lord will service your life. Amen. The Lord will meet you at the point of your need. Amen. The Lord will do amazing things for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This morning, I want us to begin to explore something that keep on ringing in my heart which the Lord has also laid in my heart to share with us. And uh, I want you to, to be attentive as we look at it. There are certain things that cross that Christ wrote for us on the cross and uh, Paul speaking he said I am persuaded of the thing that accompany salvation I am persuaded of the thing that accompany salvation. There are things that accompany our salvation. 
Paul said, is persuaded of them. <coughs> In Hebrew chapter 6, Hebrew chapter 6, and I will commence reading from verse 7. He said, For the art which drinketh in the rain that come often upon it, and bringeth forth herbs meet for them by whom it is dressed, receive blessings from God. But that which beareth thorns and barriers is rejected and is nigh unto cursing whose hand is to be burned. You see that? It's talking about the earth and what earth made happen because it received rain from God. It produced half that is a blessing. And it said, but that which beareth tongues and barrier is rejected and is nigh unto cousin, whose end is to be burned. Now, when you look at this scripture, there is a kind of metaphor that God is trying to give to us. He's giving us a kind of example of things that happen in the natural. When rain fall on the earth, the earth bringeth forth fruit. And, and if you look at it, it also bringeth forth tongues. One is a blessing and one is a cursing. One ended up with men as a blessing and when one ended up in the fire. Then he went to verse 9. He said, but beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation though we thus speak. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which you have showed towards his name. You see that? Towards his name. In that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. You have ministered to the saint and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end that ye be not slothful but follower of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise inherit the promise. My emphasis, I just read this scripture down for you to be blessed. Or there's power in reading scripture. But my emphasis is the thing that accompanies salvation. The thing that accompanies salvation. In, in, in a new international version, NIV say, even though we speak like this, dear friend, we are convinced of better thing in your case. The thing that you have to do with salvation, the things you have to do with salvation, the things you have to do with salvation. There are things that accompany salvation. There are things that must happen to us after we have received Christ. He said, we are convinced of better things in your case. The thing that you have to do with salvation. What you have to do with your salvation. There is the work of salvation. There is the blessing of salvation. The same way rain come to the earth and the earth take the rain and bring forth, I mean the earth, the, the earth take the rain because of the presence of the rain 
and bring forth fruit and bring forth herbs. It is in the same way now that salvation has come to us, there is what we are to do. The earth does not retain the water, the rainfall, and remain the same. He makes use of the rainfall to produce herbs, which are a blessing. Strops. He produces plants, and it's a blessing to man. Now, that is why Paul is talking to us that, look, the salvation we have received, they are convinced that this salvation is going to make a better us. And not only that, it will enable us to do some things. Some thing, praise God. Amen. I hope you are getting what we are saying. That's why I'm starting a series on walking in the miraculous. Walking in the miraculous. Walking in the miraculous. That's why he said, we are convinced of better thing in your case. In your case. In your case. The thing that you have to do with salvation. There is what salvation enable you to do. The same way, just like there is what the rainfall enabled the earth to bring forth. Praise God. I said, praise God. Uh, if you like, you can consider this. Um, if you like, you can consider this thing or compare it to what Colossians 1 and verse 13 is talking about. Colossians 1, I think verse 12. Verse 12. He said, giving thanks unto the Father, which had made us meet to be partaker of the inheritance of the saint in light. Inheritance. You see, the work Christ wrought on the cross, which is what we receive that we call grace that saved us. There is what that work give to us as inheritance. 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 And look at it from this perspective. The work Christ wrought on the cross for us. We don't need to go to cross by ourselves. But we can tap into it. It's our inheritance. If I build a house, my children can easily take the house and they don't have to build another one. That is their inheritance. Now, so salvation brought us to some level of inheritance. Now, it's saying, it's a give thanks unto the Father which had made us meet, we would not have been able, but the Father has made us meet, to be partaker of the inheritance of the saint. Everyone, as you become saint, there are things that you inherit. There are things the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ transfer to you. Praise God. I said, praise God. That's why he said, we are persuaded of better things. We have a conviction from certain things that has happened that the better you will emerge. Yeah. If you if you look at scripture, the Bible in Proverbs says, the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. They are in the same location, but the righteous will be more excellent. Why? Because the righteous have access to the inheritance. To inheritance. I want to put this to us in our, physical, in our practical times, especially we that are black Africans. Black Africans. I keep on saying this. We are ever a starter. When I, when I talk of this, I don't mean the whole Africa, Africans. But majority, 90% are starters. What do I mean by starters? They had nothing they inherited from their father. And where it started from is because an African man 
we have less debt on family value. I want you to follow. We are not like other community, the Asian community, the Indian community. You can see your classmate that you finish school with from those community after five years of your graduation, they are talking another dimension that you don't even, you are still looking for a job. You are still hopping from one town, one company to other looking for employment. But you see, they, they just come and build on what their family has been building on. And that's why I, I, I like being practical when I'm teaching on this area. That's why like I have lived in Kenya for many years. But I have hardly found an Indian man doing plastering work on five-story building. I, I don't think I've seen one. You only find them supervising others. You find them supervising others. Why? Because there is a family value that they have embraced. And there are certain slums that in Africa, like Kibera, like uh, most of the one we have in Kenya, I hardly find any one of them living there. And I begin to dig out what is the secret. You see, they, they build a family, they build their family in such a way that the family gives shoulder to the young one that is being born. So they become taller the moment they enter into the labor market. And that is what I, where I want to draw inspiration. Now that you are born again, Jesus is giving you his shoulder to become taller. Amen. To become taller. Amen. To accept. That's why it was guaranteed, Paul said, we are persuaded of better things of you. You are not going to be like Christ, like the way he went about laboring for our freedom. No, you are already free and that is where you will start. That's why he said, if any man be in Christ is a new creature, all things, among the old things, we always limit to sin. No, even the struggle, all things that your family used to struggle, all things has come to pass. If any man being Christ is a new creature, he's a new creature. New creature means here, yeah, whatever has been existing in the family is not going to be the same. Oh, yes. You are going to start on a new pedestal. You are going to start a new thing. Amen. A new thing. Can I hear your amen? amen? A new thing. An entirely new thing. Amen. He said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, everything has become new. Amen. New lifestyle. New lifestyle. That, style, that lifestyle that is known with your family, that everybody has to struggle, has come to an end. Amen. You will not struggle. You don't have to struggle. Amen. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. You see, the word be in Christ means he's tapping into the inheritance of what Christ made available. Hallelujah. Inheritance. is in inheriting the work of Christ as a leverage. Mm. Did you catch what I'm saying? Yes, sir. That's why Christianity is not a call to struggle. It's a call to leverage on the work of Christ. Amen. It's to leverage on the work of Christ. Praise God. I said, praise God. This is the truth. This is the truth of the, of the gospel. You are not called to repeat what Christ has done. You are called, we are called to leverage on it. We are called to leverage on it. And I tell you, we need leverages in life. It makes a big difference. So like I said, African, African men, you find out everybody struggle on their own. If there are five in family, everybody will start. And that way, when they get married and start their family, the people in that same family will start struggling like that. And that's how we have been living. But we can see 
what Christ wants us to do. Christ may, I mean, the work of Christ is to lever is to be a leverage for you to rise. We are persuaded of better things of you. As you take advantage of the thing that accompanies salvation, let me take you to John chapter 1. In John chapter 1, it says, As many that have received him, he has given them power to become the Son of God. The Son of who you are determines a lot of things. Did you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. We saw it in several families. I love using practical, practical things that everyone... We saw it even in America, the Bush family. The father ruled, the son ruled. We've seen it in African nation. We've seen it in Kenya. We've seen it in Congo. The people riding on the works of their father and gaining mileage on others. The same way you and I, we are to ride on the work of Christ and gain mileage. That's why I said the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. They are living in the same environment, but they are not producing the same, they are not having the same experience. One is drawing from the experience of the work of Christ, and one is drawing from the experience of the natural law. You remember, in Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18, what did he say? He said, I and the children whom the Lord has given me, we are for signs and wonder. You know the meaning of signs and wonder? We are for a life that cannot be, we are for a glorious life that cannot be justified by natural law. Hallelujah. We are for signs and wonder. Sign inexplainable. Praise God. We are for signs and wonder. So when you become, when you receive Christ, he gave you power to become his son. For what purpose? So that you can leverage on his personality. You can leverage on his personality. Okay, let me take, let me take you deeper into it. What did Jesus say? He said, you are not the one who have chosen me. I am the one who have chosen you. And empower you. Ordain me, empower you. You see, when I empower you, I give the power that I have to give meaning to your life. And empower you and said, you should go forth and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. Listen to this. And that whatsoever you ask in my name, it shall be given to you by my Father. Whatsoever you ask in my name. The name of Christ become a leverage to get our desire met. Whatsoever ye ask in my name. You see, you don't have a name with God. But Christ has a name with God. He said, wherefore the Lord has given him a name that is above every other name, that at this name every name should bow and every tongue should confess that he is Lord. So Jesus said, look, if you are going to use your name before God, your prayer will not be answered. Leverage on my reputation with God. Leverage on my connection with God. And this we have seen over and over in life. Let's go to the Old Testament. You will see there. There was a lame man. You don't see a lame man in the palace. It's an atema. It's an eyesore. But there was a, a man called Mephibosheth who was lame. And because he was lame, of course, he was actually downgraded to the point that he was living in the house of his father's servant. You see that? He has gone down. He was not living in his own house. He was living in the house of his, of his father's servant. That is state of hopelessness. That was the end of him. Because I can't imagine, except for respect, whether he has a say in that house. Because that servant also have his sons. 
But look at what happened. The relationship between Jonathan and Saul. Sorry, the relationship between Jonathan and David paved way for him to eat with the king. And that's what salvation offers. We are not qualified. That's why I say he has met us to be a partaker of divine nature. A partaker of divine nature. We are natural, but when we receive Christ, we are empowered that we can now be a partaker of divine nature, which we are not. So salvation is a qualifier. Amen. Wow. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are we together this morning? Yes, sir. I, listen, I want to drill this thing into your heart. I want to engraft it into your heart. You know what it means when it gets into your heart? You begin to set your expectation. And that expectation begins to determine God's manifestation upon our lives. Salvation is not just... Uh, <laughs> salvation is, just, is not an emblem. Salvation is a lifestyle. There is, that's why Paul was so convinced. We are persuaded of better things of you. We are persuaded because of the thing that you can do with salvation. And one of the things you can do with salvation is to leverage on the work of Christ, the work that he wrought, the favor that he had with God. That's why he made it very clear. In my name, anything you ask, it will be given to you. In my name, anything you ask, my father will give it to you. Don't come to the earth and be struggling like other people. Come to the earth and leverage. Just like rain, leverage. And the earth leverage on the arrival of the rain to produce fruit. Leverage on my relationship, on the work that I wrote. That's why you can no longer use your natural parent to describe your destiny. It's wrong. It's wrong. This morning, as you go about your life, please remember what I have taught this morning. Amen. Let it take root in your heart. Amen. Jesus was victorious on the cross. Leverage your need to be victorious. Hallelujah. Anything you know about Christ, leverage your need to get your own done. Leverage on it. We are persuaded of better things of you. The call to Christianity is a call to better life. It's not a call to regret. It's not a call to shame. You hear what the Bible says? It says, and my people shall never be ashamed. Why? Because they will leverage on my glory. I pray that this thing get into your heart. I don't think of my family, my extended family for anything I want. I think and rely on the work of Christ. Salvation made me meet. It enabled me to be a partaker of divine nature. I have a natural nature, but when I received Christ, my nature was changed to also be divine. So I'm empowered and entitled to manifest as a supernatural being. Oh, yes, Jesus. Otherwise, who, how, how dare you lay hand on the sick? I lay hand because Christ wrought that on, uh, on the cross. By his tribe we were healed. So I take advantage of of his nature that is in me. And I dare what he dare. And what answer to him, answer to me. You know what he said? He said, if thou shalt say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and shall not doubt in your heart, you shall have whatsoever you say. That was not the nature of a natural man. That was the nature of Christ. He is the word of God personified. Walking in the miraculous. We are not called to walk in the realm of the natural. We are called to walk in the supernatural. Hallelujah. 
And somebody say, how does it become? No, you simply leverage on the work of Christ on the cross. You simply leverage on the work of Christ on the cross. That is what enable you to be a partaker of divine nature. A partaker of divine nature. You are natural, but the happening around you are not natural. You are physical, but the thing happening around you cannot be explained by natural law. The law will give you understanding this morning as you face this new month. Today, Christian, we... 80% of us are almost working with our, our senses. No, you are not meant to work with your senses. You are a spirit being. You are to leverage on the work on the cross that was wrought in our favor. We are to leverage on it and traverse in the realm of the supernatural. That's what we are supposed to do. But we calculate things with our mind. We speak to him based on what we see. And that is the difference between us and Christ. Praise God. Walking in the supernatural. Walking in the supernatural. And that's the problem we have even in leadership today. Especially as has to do with members and their leaders. We do everything like with calculator. 2 plus 2 is 4. No. In the realm of the spirit, 2 plus 2 can be any figure. Yes, sir. Two plus two can be 10,000. <laughs> it depending on what your de you desire. You, you, you are telling members sometimes, go and do this. They will tell you a million weight cannot be done. Our dwelling is not in the physical. Our dwelling is in the realm of the spirit. So we cannot use physical law as a guideline to our life. <laughs> I love what, what, what one of our, uh, our, our leaders says in Nairobi. I spoke to Nairobi Church on certain issue and I gave it to the management. And I was rushing them that it can, we, we, we get this thing done uh, within the shortest time. We will be sharing that testimony in later day. And I, I was speaking to them. One of them confessed to me that he was like asking himself, why is, Papa, why is Pastor saying this? It's not that simple. No, it is simple. But you see, you are saying that because you are calculating things based on your brain, which is okay. But that was not the system that you are recruited to. The moment you come born again, there is a change of position. Remember Colossians, he delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us to the kingdom of his dear son. Now in the kingdom of his dear son, physical brain is not needed. Two plus two is not four. In the, in the spiritual, it's not for. It can be any figure. <laughs> and they, they were giving me testimony. As they step out, as they step out, it was easier than I've said. But before, when they were in the physical law, it was more difficult to them. But when they step out by faith, it becomes simpler than what I have said. Because they took advantage of certain spiritual law. Praise God. I said, praise God. I want you to begin to see. Look, the remaining three months is more than enough. Yes, sir. This year, we still have meaningful events in your life. Yes, this year, we still have the celebration God intended in January. Amen. <laughs> okay, listen. Look at Jonah. How do they say the journey will have made in three days? He made it in one day. Evil road, road can be compressed when God is involved. The Lord will see you through. Amen. Begin to take advantage. Begin to put your nature, engage your nature in the challenges of life. The, the nature you carry is not the physical nature. No, at salvation, you are converted to a spirit. You are converted to what? To a spirit. Praise God. I said, praise God. The Lord is on your side. I see you walking in the miraculous. I see you walking in the miraculous. You can conceive. <laughs> Even without womb. Medically, they will slap me now. But by my nature, I know it can happen. 
He said, I'm God of all flesh. There is nothing impossible for me to do. Now, you believe that and dare him for your own things. He will get it done for you. He will get it done for you. Please stop being double-minded. A double-minded will receive nothing from the Lord. If you are born again, begin to leverage on the work on Calvary. Begin to leverage for the work of Calvary, on the work that was wrought in Christ for us, for turning your impossibility to possibility. Begin to leverage. You know what he said? I will make it where there is no way. Physically, where there is no way, you stop to construct one. But God said, no. Even when you get to a point where there is no way, expect me, I'm going to make one. The Lord is on your side. Amen. I am persuaded of better things. We better thing will come when we begin to leverage on what Christ has done for Amen. you. Listen to me. You can ride the car today. Amen. Amen. Natural law is not possible. You should have half saving. Natural law, you should have uh, scout for it. Natural law, you should have window shop for it. But I tell you, somebody can give you a car today and it's the car that you want. I've been there many times. Waking up in the morning, by evening I have a car and I'm not a thief. It just come. Praise God. I said, praise God. I have seen it. So I'm not talking to you about what I've not handled. That is waking up in the morning, I don't have a car and by evening I had one. And I didn't steal them. No, somebody gave me free. Free. I'm riding on the walk of Christ. As I become a son, there are certain benefits I enjoy. And the same is of you. Your salvation is not fake. There is no fake Christ in anybody. It's the same Christ. It is knowledge and maturity that makes the difference. You remember the prodigal son and his brother? They were all sons. But the elder doesn't know his right. But the, the junior knows his right. Praise God. I said, praise God. We are persuaded. The life of the miraculous is our birthright. It's our birthright. Jesus said with his own mouth, he said, the bread is for the children. Not for the slave. The bread is for the children. I was just looking at the house of the prodigal son in my, in my understanding right now. If the elder brother has not taken anything, what of the slave? If the elder brother has not had courage to take anything, well, imagine the slave. But this boy had an understanding that, look, I'm not to start a life with my sweat. <laughs> And it is high time we need to behave like that guy. I am not to start a life with my sweat. He went to his father and said, Look, father, divide your asset and give to me what is a portion to me. When you become a child of God, there is what belongs to you. Wow. Those are the things we'll be looking at. Yes, 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 yes. There is what belongs to you. That boy didn't say, Father, show me how you get this word so that I go and start labor to get mine. No. He said, divide this asset of yours. I've waited. I, I have a plan. I've waited and I don't wish you evil. I don't want you to die. But you can divide what belongs to me. Because I can't wait till you die. Then I start enjoying. Stop saying you are going to wait till you get to heaven before you enjoy life. As he is in heaven, so are you on earth. Why, why will God say such word? That means whatever resources and power that is available for him in heaven, he wrote it in Christ. So while you are on earth and receive Christ, you enjoy it. Elijah tapped Elijah tap into it, you remember? Elijah prayed that there would be no rain, and there was no rain. Elijah prayed that rain come, rain came. He was living a life of divinity while he's still on the earth. We are persuaded of the thing that accompanies salvation. May the good hand of God give you understanding. May he enlarge your heart. Praise God. May he enlarge your heart. This thing is gradually eroded among believers. They do everything by calculation. 
They do everything by calculation. Even now when you prophesy, in the name of Jesus, may God build for you. He will first of all think of mortgage. When you say, may the Lord prosper you and give you the desire of your heart. That car you want, it will come. It will come to him. Uh, who will finance the car? Christ. The work of Christ finance it. Hallelujah. Long time ago. Hallelujah. Long time ago. Long. We are not to prosper by a worldly system. Our, pros our prosperity is not tied to the economy of nations. No. <laughs> it's tied. He said, my God will supply. All your need according to his riches. In Christ Jesus. According, according, not according to the economy of your nation. And if you don't believe that, find out from Isaac in Old Testament. The economy of that nation was down. The Philistines were down. But Isaac leveraged on the law God has made available. He leveraged on it. Instead of eating his seed or storing it for the farmer, he planted his seed. And what happened? God used supernatural power to water the seed from under the earth. Only his own farm have water underground. And the Bible says, in that same town, he became great and become very, very great until the Philistines envy him. The indigent are envying the foreigner. That is how God has made our life to be through salvation. People on this earth should envy us. That's why I say we are the light of the world. How can they say we are the light of the world? We are riding on the walk that was wrought on the cross. That's why when he looked down, he doesn't see us. Like a natural man. He said when he see the travail of his son, he will be satisfied. The travail was for us. The Lord will give you understanding. Amen. I said the Lord will give you understanding. We need to understand these things so that we stop thinking like every other human being on earth. Salvation converted us from humanity to divinity. And it comes with power. It comes with what? With power. You look at Isaiah chapter 8, which I've read, verse 8. I and the children whom the Lord has given me, we are for signs and wonder. We are for signs. There is what we are for. We are for signs and wonder. We are for the life of divine nature. We are to walk in the miraculous. Somebody said that is Old Testament. They get to get to get to get to the book of Mark. You will see the same thing, 16 from verse 17. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, you see leverage. In my name, they will cast out devil. In my name, if they take any deadly thing, it shall by no means hurt them. What hurt others are not meant to hurt us. Amen. The coronavirus, post-coronavirus and all that is not meant to hurt us. Amen. It was targeted to hurt humanity, but it's going to bring us out in our fullness. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. I said praise God. I believe God with you this morning that this word will go a long way to shape on your heart. Amen. When this thing is in your heart, that is what the earth will be bringing forth for you. Amen. What you loaded in your heart determine what heart give to you. What you loaded in your H-E-A-R-T, heart, determine what the earth give back to you. Amen. That's why I say guide up your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of your life. The issues of your life are not from your environment. It's from the depth and the richness of your heart. This morning, I want you to know you have not received Christ in vain. You have not received Christ in vain. You are not enlisted among the saved people in vain. There are certain benefits that comes along with it. He delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us to the kingdom of his dear son. You are a citizen of heaven. And every citizen has a benefit that a stranger doesn't have. Or a foreigner. Praise God. I said praise God. I look at life, how it's so simple it is. When I'm traveling sometime home from another country, I see a lot of things. Like for example, one time I traveled from Addis to Nigeria. And I, I, I noticed something. I noticed that 
when I was in Kenya, all other Kenya were just passing me. Where they stopped me, they didn't stop them. And I, and I just got inspiration. And then immediately we arrived in Nigeria, where they were stopping order, I was not stopping. When I was in uh, Addis, I was lining on a, uh, 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 on a different lane from the Ethiopians. And then in the last two hours, we get to another territory called Nigeria, to the country. And then where they were lining up, I was not lining up, I just passed them. So I said, wow, this is what Christ has done for us. Where other natural human beings are lining up, you are not supposed to line up. You are not supposed to line up. You have to carry your passport. They don't even ask you many questions. Where are you? You know, you are welcome to the kingdom. Pam, they stamp you, you pass. You don't feel for no more delay in your life. No more delay in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I was told the, the greatest even happened to American citizens. The moment an immigration see, they don't ask them questions. They don't ask them questions. I was told they don't even hold it for too long. Nothing hold you down for too long. Amen. I said nothing hold you down for too long anymore. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If American passport can be that powerful, or British passport, what of heaven passport? Hallelujah. What of righteousness passport? Yes, Lord. It will make way for you. Amen. So let this be in your heart. You become like a, a, a spray. There, there is this thing, I don't know what they call it. Or latest technology they put in toilet, uh, they, they are deodorant can off, and at a particular time it just spray it just spray the it just it just spray the environment, and the odors change. I want you to know, wherever you go, what is in your heart smell out, is spray out. If fear and naturality is what come out from your heart. You are just like every other person. Kenya, we call it Kawaida. Like every other person. So, the treatment that will be given to you will be like that. But when it oozes out that you are an ambassador on earth, the same way, the same treatment is given to you. Praise God. Amen. It is well with your soul. Amen. Father, I pray for everyone this morning yes, that what you have wrought for us on the cross Amen. become our identity wherever we go. And in every conflict and battles of life, we will no longer go there as a natural man. We will go banking on the work that you wrought in Christ for us. Just like Paul prayed that our eyes of understanding will be enlightened. Lord, let everyone see what I'm seeing this morning as they face their daily challenges so that they can wear crown at the end of it. We are not a loser. We are not a victim of life. Thank you, faithful Father, in Jesus' precious name. In case you are dead this morning, you are not born again. You are still a natural man. And the bad, the natural bad, make your day to be few on earth and full of trouble. But when you are born again, you are welcome to a new order of life. Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. This morning, I would like you to receive Jesus if you are not born again. And it's very simple. All you need to do is to pray this simple prayer with me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, thank you for this morning. Thank you for bringing your word to me. Thank you for this hour and the season that we are in. Amen. Jesus, I am a sinner. And today, I invite you to come into my life. Forgive me my sin and my trespasses. Write my name in the book of life. Because I believe in the perfect work of Calvary. And I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Brethren, your sins are forgiven right now. And you are now a new creation. All things are have just gone to hell. All things has become new for you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Get into a Bible-believing church and begin to grow in the law. It is well with your soul. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And I believe this morning we should worship the Lord with our substance. Amen. Amen. We should worship the Lord with our substance. I, I had a chat with my immediate senior sister yesterday and uh, I was cracking joke with her. And she told me, no, I'm not rich. Uh, you are richer than me. I don't have the money you have. And I laugh. And, uh, and I told her, look, my today, you are part of the people that make it happen. I want you to know, whatever you do to the kingdom is securing your own future. 
every seed you sow into the kingdom to expand the kingdom of God goes along into the future to expand you. I was telling her, whatever I own, you, were, you own it because it, the, the, your little money that time that you people put together to educate me is what produced today. What you put in the kingdom, the kingdom of God is a fertile ground. When you plant a seed there, when the future comes, you can be sure of bumper harvest. As you worship the Lord this morning with your substance, I want you to have that expectation. As I bless this offering right now, Heavenly Father, thank you for all that you have spoken to us this morning. I ask you, Lord Jesus, accept this offering. They are, they, are, they, are, they are giving into your kingdom. Use it for the advancement of your kingdom. And I know you, Lord, when you expand, you will not forget them. Bless everyone. Multiply the seed sown into your kingdom this morning. And reward everyone accordingly. Thank you, faithful Father. Make this month a month of an unusual financial breakthrough for every giver. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you. See you on Monday at uh, the same time of Monday, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, and Friday. The Lord bless you and prosper you. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you.